Michael Grabelny. I'm very honored to be uh, the president of the Rutgers Parents Association. Just to let you know a little bit about uh, myself, for those of you who have not seen me before or who have not communicated with me before, my family has about a 60-year history here. I am a 1976 graduate of Rutgers College. I have two sons, one who just graduated from SAS last year, and I have a sophomore who's here this year. So I understand a lot of your concerns as a parent, and I urge you to keep in touch with the Parents Association, which is here for you. It is uh, an organization that is free of charge to you, free in the way that you pay your tuition, so it's not technically free, but it comes with that tuition. We need you to know that we are here to give you information. We are not a helicopter organization for parents who hover over their children. We are here as an organization to permit you to share in your students' experience to the best of, the, of your ability. So the family has a great experience while your student is here at Rutgers. Oftentimes we conduct surveys asking you, what do you want to see? What are the needs? We have had several of these things come up. Some questions have been on housing. Some questions have been on dining. Our last uh, session in February was show me the money. We had a scholarship program. Where can your students get financial aid, scholarships, um, financial assistance? We also stream that program on the web. And we're following up that program today with show me the jobs. We've also heard you loud and clear. So today we are going to be addressing uh, some of the topics in regard to uh, where the jobs are, student employment, study abroad, uh, residence life, where your students can access job opportunities. What I want the parents in this room to also know is our board provides a wonderful resource of networking opportunities. I am very, very privileged to work for an organization in New Jersey who employs 47% 40, of our corporate workforce are Rutgers graduates. So we love keeping New Jersey jobs in New Jersey and we love taking your students and developing them. Um, internships, externships. Right now, my corporation alone is funding about 30 to 40 different internships and externships for Rutgers students. I'm a very, very small part of this Parents Association network. We have a large board, so again, I encourage you to remain in touch with our offices, to go to our website. For those of you who don't know the website, it is parents.rutgers.edu. You can also find our program today streaming on that website in the future. So again, thank you for coming. I encourage you to resource the organization, ask questions today, and I am now at this point going to turn the program off to Executive Director, Dr. Lee Snyder. Good morning, welcome. For those of you who know me, a mic is not something I usually like, but since we're videoing this and we need to have this on, on the video, I have to keep the mic on. So if I'm too loud for you, I apologize. Um, I just want to give you a little background beyond what Cheryl has already said about the program today. Um, it is not a job fair. Uh, we're not here to take resumes and interview students. What we're trying to do with the Show Me the Jobs opportunity is look at creating, putting yourself in a good spot to get a job opportunity either when you graduate or while you're in school here. Uh, a lot of times uh, you'd like to do some work, you'd like to do something while you're here, and what better place to be employed than in the environment that you're living, and I think you'll get an opportunity to see lots of different things that are here today. We have people who will hire students while they're here. Uh, we have people from study abroad. Uh, we have people from externships and internships talking, and so you'll get an opportunity. The first part of our program is from career services, and we're going to look at jobs in general. And then after that, at about 11 o'clock, we're going to have about a dozen organizations 
for parts of the university, come up and just for five to seven minutes, let you know who they are, what kinds of opportunities they have, and then from 12 to 1, they're all going to be in one of the rooms on the first floor here, and you can pick out three of those areas if you want to, and go and they'll run three 20-minute sessions where you can get maybe some more specific information and things like that. Just remember that all of these things are for the students and for the students to do. Our purpose with, from the Parents Association standpoint is we want to incorporate families into the university structure. We want you to feel comfortable knowing what's available. We want you to feel comfortable talking to people that are here and encouraging your sons and daughters to do this because ultimately that's where it has to come from. It has to come from them. So uh, we have a very hectic and busy program today. We have lots of folks here to present. And so I think we'll get started. Uh, if we can, uh, I'd like to introduce Janet Jones, who's the Senior Associate Director of Career Services, and she will take the program from here. Janet. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. We're gonna have fun, let me just figure this out. So I too share with you that I'm a proud parent of a Rutgers sophomore. And I have to tell you just quickly before we get started, my favorite day since he began school last year um, was last Wednesday, the 16th, when he called me to tell me that he landed a job for the summer. I was so proud. Imagine having your mother as the Career Center Director over on the Bush campus. And so, you know, last summer it didn't really work out and times were tough, first year student. And this year, you know, he aligned that on his own pretty much, little, little nudging, little helicoptering by mom, sure. Uh, he called me up and he said, I got the job offer and it's paid, $19 an hour. So that was extremely encouraging. I was very excited he'll be working at L'Oreal this summer. So I share that with you as my story. I have another son coming up. So I am a parent of two, hopefully soon to be two um, Rutgers students next, in the next couple of years. So for today's program, we are going to just see what we're going to talk about a couple of things. Um, I'd like to give you sort of an overarching view of the job market. Um, but before that even, we're going to talk about skills employers want, briefly. It, I think it's critically important for students to understand, as they're progressing through the college experience, what employers are really looking for, marketable skills, and, and maybe even ways in which students can obtain those skills. And it's not always just through their academic courses that they acquire skills, as, as you probably could guess. So we'll talk a little bit about skills. Uh, also, we will talk about national trends in the job market, uh, give you a picture of sort of what's going on. Something's going on with the text up there, I see, which I'm not loving. Uh, there is, I have another thumb drive with a presentation on it, so I don't know if I should switch it. Uh, I know it's readable, but it's not what it should be. Uh, and then we'll talk more regionally about what's going on here at Rutgers, sort of the recruiting picture here on campus. And finally, we'll segue into uh, how career services can help. And so I'm, I'm gonna ask you, should we switch slides or leave it the way it is? I'm just gonna take a station break here. Sorry about that. This is what happens when you send the slides ahead, right? Well, I have, but that, that won't do, mine won't do what that is currently doing, so. 
Uh, the, the text is like truncating up there, so. Sorry? Thanks. We're gonna fix it. That's what we do. We're in the business of solving problems. <laughs> Bear with me, please. No. So it's not going to matter. All right. Can you bring up? I would get to it. The text is truncating. It's not there, it isn't. Is it up there now? It's better up. Great. Let's go with this. Wait, let me wait, I have to do yeah. Great. Okay. Page up. Wait, where is it? It's still doing it. Why is it doing it? When it runs. Um, All right. Okay, sorry about that. I mean, it, it's viewing differently than, I don't know. All right, we're moving on. So, so sorry about that. You could read it. It's just a tool. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about skills employers want. What is it that uh, today's job market requires or hopes students will gain as a result of their educational experience overall? So what are skills? Um, you know, <laughs> in the, as this cartoon illustrates, origami, I guess, is um, not something highly valued. But certainly this is a skill. We, some people do this in college. This is, this is certainly a skill. Uh, also a skill. But, but really when you think about what are skills, what are we really talking about? We're talking about the ability to do something well. And um, having competence, being a subject matter expert in a given area. Expertise. And so becoming an expert and developing skills in a particular area will benefit certainly anybody in the job search. But let's talk more about marketable skills, sort of there's technical skills, there are soft skills, and all of these may be important as one approaches, you know, job market and, and career areas they're interested in. So here are some examples of some marketable skills uh, that students acquire as a result of their education pretty much in some capacity all of these skills are acquired. Communication skills, oral, written, platform skills, delivering presentations is extremely important. Management skills, being able to manage a project from beginning to end, manage time, manage people, manage budgets. Um, basic business skills, budgeting, financial, marketing, sales, customer service, all, the, all of these things sort of come in handy. Organizational skills. Uh, demonstrating the skills of a leader uh, is increasingly important and often sought out after by employers. Uh, and technology and whether it's, you know, it doesn't have to be engineering specifically, but having a handle on technology and how it would impact your career or field, um, I think is incredibly important. Language skills are important. I mean, there are many, many other things that are not, uh, this is by no means a, a um, comprehensive list. And so students go, go along their way while they're in college and they acquire these skills through a variety of ways. Probably you would think first and foremost academic coursework. That is, that is important. I, I say yes. I, I believe that many of the skills are developed as a result of things outside of the classroom. 
which is why the rest of the list is here. And first on the list would be jobs, internships, and co-ops. So work experiences the student may have while they're pursuing the college experience. Um, they are hopefully obtaining part-time jobs, campus jobs, internships. You know, it builds up as you go along. The, as, as I said about my own son, you know, he started in the first year. His first job in his first summer was working at a liquor store. I helped him to get that. And then from there, you know, now he's in the internship. So, you know, it, it does change over time as you acquire more skills, as you acquire more knowledge within your major, and so forth. Beyond that, there are so many other opportunities here uh, within the college setting, and one of those would be getting involved in research, research with faculty, or doing your own independent research study. Um, leadership and getting involved with student activities and organizations. There are over 300, at least, organizations um, around campus that students could become involved with and take on leadership roles and, and, and develop skills. Service. Uh, there are service learning programs. There are volunteer opportunities throughout throughout campus and, and the world, really. Uh, other activities that students may be involved in, such as intramural sports or club sports or activities outside of you know, student organizations. And finally, experiences like study abroad also provide students with great experience and skills. So just thinking along these lines, there's a vast a number of ways students can acquire skills throughout their college experience. But so, what I did for the purpose of this program, and I'm so glad the text isn't goofed up anymore, it seems to have worked itself out now, uh, have you about that, was to look at four key skill areas. And this was sourced from the Heldridge uh, Center for Workforce Development, which is uh, over in New Brunswick and we work closely with to, to really see what kind of research they have collected and compiled about what employers want. And um, these were four that I selected from, from their list uh, that I thought were, since this research had been conducted, pretty important to key in on in addition to those that I mentioned earlier. So first, adaptability. Uh, this is something that is extremely important in today's job market, uh, is the ability for students to think critically, to be flexible in an ever-changing environment. And that's the one constant we know that change will always be a part, what's evolving with technology. Uh, being able to manage you know, flexible roles in different jobs, work across teams, uh, manage your time, um, engage in lifelong learning and know that you know just because you've graduated from college your development of skills and your development of your career is just beginning you'll be constantly in professional development activities and so on and and in some ways you'll be managing your own career I mean it's just not like it was in the old days where you landed in one place and you stayed there for your entire career we know from research that the the change up of jobs now for an individual is is, is far greater than what it ever was w in the past. So I think adaptability leads this list appropriately. From here, information management and communication, the ability to analyze, collect, and, and synthesize data and understand um, how to communicate that, cultural awareness, diversity would fall under this, diversity and sensitivity to diversity, public speaking, being able to speak to a large group, a small group, interpersonal skills, this all falls within this area. Negotiation, um, the ability to persuade, all of these things are, are extremely important in today's workforce. Business skills was on my original list too. Uh, the ability to manage projects, to manage people, to sell, to provide customer service, um, understanding basic business finance, these are, again, things that will be important regardless of whether you're actually in a finance or a business career or you're working for a nonprofit organization. Uh, even in education, business skills are critical, as many of you, I'm sure, realize. And then finally, for the purpose of the skills section, math, science, technology, engineering, technology. Now, while not everybody here or has children or, or students of technical majors, I think there's some degree of technical skills required in any job that we hold. So uh, knowledge of math and science or a technical skill or discipline and knowing how to apply this, 
tacked onto that was including distance learning tools, uh, computing, quantitative skills, I think that are, would sum it up nicely. So this should just give you a sense of what employers want, what they're looking for. Sometimes though, <laughs> this is at my transition, sometimes students often think not in terms of skills, not in terms of even career goals. I'd like, I'd love for them to think along this way, uh, but sometimes they think differently and they think I want to major in this because this is what I'm interested in. I am interested in psychology. I am interested in history. I am interested in computer science. And they're not necessarily associating that major with a specific career. They might even be thinking along the lines of what skills am I going to develop. So because so many students make career decisions once they've chosen a particular major, I'm going to say two things. One is that not all careers match up with or necessarily relate directly to a major. And some of you who are parents, and just by show of hands, I would like to see the parents in the room who majored, keep your hands up parents, for, just humor me for a minute, who majored in something in college that they're still doing now. <laughs> a couple, I have my hand up still. I was a psychology major and then a counseling major and then a human resources major. So a couple, and, and that does occur. Of course, the, the hope maybe, but not always because sometimes students choose a major and, and even at the, even the professional schools, I can't tell you how many accountants end up in different fields or how many engineers end up in sales. This happens all the time. I'm sure you know people in this circumstance. So, but what we've done at Career Services is we decided to look at all the majors. Uh, there are so many, there are over 100 majors at Rutgers and look at them closely and develop information for students which is available on our website. It used to be hard copy, we internally call this majors handouts, uh, but now it's what can I do with my major or what could I do with a major in X. And so we've painstakingly put together um, this information on all the majors pretty much that are offered at Rutgers New Brunswick and we've compiled data and what we did was we went out and looked at what are alums doing that have this major? What kind of jobs do they have? And so for the point of illustration, we picked three majors today, three popular majors. The first is communication. And this is an excerpt. This is not what the document looks like completely. It's much more extensive than this, but for the sake of showing you today, um, this simply describes communications major, fine opportunities in public relations, health, interpersonal, intercultural, mediated, and organizational communication and telecommunication processes and policies. As an example, there's a lot more text, but this is just to give you an idea of how the document starts. And then uh, in the boxes below, and I'm sorry, it's a little cut off, it's first jobs of recent grads and then jobs of experienced alumni. And it's showing the type of job they hold and where they're holding it now, currently. And so students find this interesting because they think, oh, I, I didn't know I could maybe do that. I didn't ever think of going into sales with a communications major. I mean, maybe public relations, yes, certainly that makes sense. I'd love to work at ABC News, wouldn't you? So, you know, this just gives students an idea. So we did this for a bunch of majors, including psychology, uh, talking about, again, um, what some of our psych graduates ha are involved with. I, I will tell you, that as a psych major to go into fields related to psychology, and you probably know this already, it would require going on to graduate school, most likely, a master's at least, perhaps more, if you're gonna practice within the field of psychology. Many psychologists, psychology majors just go on to pursue careers in business and nonprofit and, and many, many other different things. And then if they're interested in careers in business, they may end up in human resources, which is sort of the people side of of the business. So, so many things can happen uh, after, after you complete your curriculum. And finally, political science, goofed up text came back. Um, solid foundation for careers in laws, law, government, national security. Many poli-sci majors go on to law school, but you don't need a poli-sci degree to go to law school. You could go to law school with an engineering degree. Many people do to become patent attorneys. 
Uh, so it, it doesn't, the major doesn't necessarily dictate a path. I think that's one message. And so many organizations and companies that recruit are looking for students of all majors. And I think if you're in a major, especially to gain an understanding of what skills and competencies you're developing as a result of that curriculum and the other things you do beyond the classroom will really be a helpful exercise for you when you go to approach your job search uh, upon graduation and even prior leading, leading up to that. So, let's talk about the job market. Who's hiring? Where are the jobs? How do you find them? I will tell you that in the 25 years that I've worked at Rutgers Career Services, the last couple of years have been the worst years of all. So I'm going to share with you some good news and some bad news. We're going to start with the bad news. The bad news is that, and this data is a little bit improved since September 10, uh, the unemployment rate is 9.6, both in New Jersey and the United States. The Northeast, I think, gets hit hardest in, in a recession. It was 4.7 in 2008, so that should show you just in two years what's occurred. I know you're seeing this in the media. I know you're experiencing it, you're experiencing it likely firsthand as I have between friends and family and other situations around you. It is the worst job market since World War II. One in eight New Jersey job seekers left the state for jobs in other places. And it's more competitive than ever to land a job. More competitive than ever. So that means if there were 50 applicants before, now there's 250 for the same job. There are still graduates from the classes of 09 and 10 who are still looking for jobs that are not in underemployed areas, meaning that they may be accepted jobs that weren't the level or the area in which they hope to pursue. So they're still in there looking. That's the bad news. And um, so, so, so here's the better news. And, and this is better. The entry level job market, and still today the job market percentage of unemployment for college grads is higher than that national and New Jersey 9.6. It's lower, I mean. The, the employability of college grads, the value of college education is still um, showing a, an improved hiring than, than without. Uh, but, but the entry-level job market today of what's happening now, currently this year, it is showing improvement. And employers are indicating that they will be hiring more college students this year from the class of 2011 than the last couple of years. And um, NACE is our professional association where a lot of this data comes. I've sourced most of it on the presentation. Here's the good news. Like I said before, having a college degree, you're going to fare better than the national averages in terms of finding employment. And the worst seems to have uh, bottomed out. It looks like we're back into a recovery mode. I think people are aware that if you're watching the news that that's what's being reported. And I will tell you firsthand, being at the Career Center, we are busier with recruiting events, with on-campus, with career fairs than we have been since 2007. So, so that's really encouraging to us. That's a great indicator that um, companies are back hiring. Um, and, and business is, is picking up, as, as they say, the old cliche. Employers are reporting an increase in hiring levels, and, and they're also reporting a slight increase in start salaries, slight. We'll get back to that. I have a lot more trends to, to uh, share with you. Uh, but experience and skills, that, that's why I started where I did at the beginning of this, because I really believe that it's how you put together your time while you're a student here and, and what you do to be engaged uh, and develop skills that will matter at the end of the road. If I can tell you, I, I, I can not tell you how many seniors have come to me and said, I don't like my resume. It's terrible. 
well, it's not terrible. You, what you did for the last four years was terrible. You didn't do, you didn't get involved. You didn't, you didn't do anything. And so it, the one thing I would say is, probably the two most important things are get good grades and get involved and develop skills beyond the classroom. Whether it's leading an organization, doing an internship, networking with a lot of professionals because you're, you're good at that and you know how important it is to cultivate the network. I mean, that's what's going to make a difference. That's where the fork in the road is going to be at the end. Are the students who put it together, who had a game plan, who planned it out, and, and weren't as concerned with the social events and the parties. So, we're going to talk about some national sort of overarching trends. There's some things that repeat from the earlier slides, but um, this will give you some more information. I know people like information about what's going on, and bachelor's level hiring is up uh, about 10%. So is internship hiring, up. In fact, probably it's even up more than that, but that's what the reports coming in are saying. Leading sectors, manufacturing, uh, professional and scientific services, the government, uh, investment banking, banking finance is coming back alive. You know, there were, a lot of, there were a lot of organizations that were just not hiring for so long that now they're panicking to hire. So we're, we're seeing that, and that's, that's good, that's good. So this is the first sort of hiring increase we've seen in, in two years, uh, which I mentioned. The most active recruiting is being conducted by Fortune 500 companies who have let positions be open for several years and now are um, desperately seeking uh, staff and uh, as well as small and fast growth companies that are creating new positions, new, new opportunities with small organizations that are growing. That's, that's where a lot of the jobs are. Um, something you should know and it talks to the issue of all majors, doesn't matter what you major in, about 40% of the employers we work with are seeking candidates from all majors. Uh, so there are, many, there are many career opportunities out there and jobs that do not require a specific major. Business, especially accounting, is strong. I'd love to have another 100 accounting students because they'd all probably have jobs. Engineering remains stable. Um, there is some growth in computer science and IT at the moment, probably over edging out engineering somewhat. Fewer jobs in construction, law, publishing, nursing, which surprises me, but yes, social services and health sciences. I've seen data that contradicts some of this. So, you know, you kind of take it with a grain of salt. Uh, these, this data was pulled from our national association's uh, reports. They do a great job, but I have seen conflicting things. Salaries, in the past that would have read salaries have stagnated if it was last year, but I will say that this has come out that they will increase slightly uh, moving forward, which is good news. And, and the last bullet point, 81% of small businesses, while they expect increase in sales, they don't necessarily expect to hire uh, as much. And then finally, um, you could see what's happened here. If you look two years ago, they were saying, well, we're going to hire, we're going to hire, and they really didn't. They maybe thought they would, but then things happened. Um, and then last year, they clearly stated we're not hiring as much. But that, now this year, they're back saying we are going to hire. And so, so that's really, that's good news. I think that's a good takeaway from today. Um, another thing that is a trend that's really important to know uh, is that companies are continuing to use internship and co-op programs as an HR strategy to identify candidates. It saves them money in terms of full-time recruiting, which is a costly endeavor for human resources departments. It provides them with an opportunity to test drive both sides. Student gets to test drive an organization and vice versa. So it's an excellent way, it's strategic on the part of organizations to um, increase intern and co-op hiring. So that said, I think that's a great closing message to leave you with uh, and to encourage your sons and daughters to try to find a related work experience prior to graduation.
Wait, I'm not done. I'm not leaving you yet. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so from there, I thought you might be interested to see what some of the best careers are. And this was something that was put out by Money Magazine and pulled together from uh, fairly reliable sources. It came out in November, Occupational Outlook Handbook in the Department of Labor. And again, you could see these slides online, so you could study and read this. Don't, don't feel like you have to write it all down. But, but you know, Lee, when Lee said to me, could you do this presentation and said, where are the jobs? You know, I felt it was my duty to at least share with you from some reliable sources, not only trends, uh, but where some of the jobs are. So you could see what's up here uh, with some salary information too. And, and by the way, if that salary information is national, it, it, it is always higher in the Northeast and the New York, in the metropolitan areas. Uh, higher salaries because of cost of living and so forth. Things you would probably assume, but let me assure you that that's true. So we have software architect, physician assistant, management consultant, you see physical therapist is there, engineer, engineer, database, sales. So there's, there's quite a array of different types of careers. And um, we didn't stop just there. We added another, another group of careers that require at least a bachelor's degree. Um, actuary, dentist, nurse, risk management, um, a wide array. There, there are thousands of different careers and job titles in the Occupational Outlook Handbook. So, I mean, don't feel bad if you're not seeing something you're pursuing up there. I'm sure it's on there somewhere and hopefully the outlook is, is good. But you could, you could dig in deeper to this at your leisure. Um, so, let's talk about what's going on at Rutgers a little bit. I, I want to say a couple of things. We are... Uh, a unit that hosts and organizes 12 career fairs each year, 12 live events. Some of them are major specific and some are general. In addition to that, we also host campus recruiting. And campus recruiting um, would be a, a strategy employers would use who want to come to campus and actually interview students on campus. This list represents the top 40 companies, and there are, there's another slide coming after this with the other, the rest of the group, um, by interviews. So I, I didn't provide you with the data, but to give you an example, Prudential, which leads the list, conducted approximately 600 interviews, to give you an idea. And they hire, now, they might not be the number one employer, but likely they are. Likely they've edged out J&J. That's new, because J&J always had that spot traditionally for years. So what, what this is showing you is the activity. Who is on campus, who is out there touching and trying to meet one-on-one -on -one with students for actual job openings. This isn't career fairs. This is we're coming here to recruit for specific job openings. And your sons and daughters can vie for and participate if they meet the qualifications to interview with any of these organizations. So that's, that, I think that's an impressive group. Here's the other half. I know, I know it may be difficult to read, and I apologize for that. But you could see it is uh, a very diverse group of employers up there. So you have everything from. McGraw-Hill, J.P. Morgan, Schlumberger, you know, companies that um, really are diverse in terms of industry and um, the business they, they're in. But then you might also want to know, what do students want? So we have a lot of ways in which we collect data uh, we ask students if they have jobs. We ask employers if they've hired our students. We do everything we can to collect that information. And so I've brought and left outside, and you could also obtain these from our offices, two reports we do each year. One is an internship report, and one is our senior survey, our graduate survey. 
uh, that we actually publish an excerpt to share with you about where our graduates have gone, where they've landed. And so if you'd like to pick up a copy of either of these, they're out available for you. But we also asked students through additional surveying what companies they would like to work for. That gives us a sense of maybe who we should be going after, are these companies on campus. If our students are indicating that these companies are considered ideal, for what reason? Do they have some sort of special attraction to these companies? Let's find out more. So we conducted a survey with a partner and uh, over a thousand students participated and, and this was what they indicated were their top 30, Rutgers students indicated were their top 30 employers of choice. J&J &J is the number one employer from the minds of students. Interestingly, Google is number two, not, not a big surprise, they're considered one of the best companies to work for. Google came to campus on a very snowy day in February and held an event and 500 students came to it. 500 students came to an event on a day that classes were canceled to speak with Googlers, as they're called, because they want to work for Google and there are a great many opportunities and Google hires a lot of our students in a variety of majors. So, I share with you this list because I think it's important to understand what students want. So you'll see there's some interesting groups up there. Peace Corps is up there. Somebody was reading this and they said, Peace Corps? I said, Peace Corps is one of our top employers of students. Students are much more civic minded uh, maybe than they were 10 or 20 years ago. I'd say that's for sure. They're going to the Peace Corps. They're going to AmeriCorps. They're going to Teach for America. Not everybody wants to work in corporate America. No, I don't. <laughs> okay, so. So what do we do at Career Services? What do we do to help bring all this together? Employers, students, preparation for job market, bridging all these gaps. You know, I, I like to see Career Services as uh, sort of the catalyst uh, between the student and the employers. Uh, but our mission is that we help prepare students for life beyond Rutgers. Uh, you should know that's not necessarily always in the form of finding a job. Because nationally, in the past, about 20% of all students graduate from college go to graduate school. So that's an interesting, fun fact. That figure is up to about 28% now. About 28% are pursuing opportunities in graduate school. And that would include medical, law, any kind of graduate program. That's a significant increase. So when you're looking at 6,000 graduates, almost 30% of them are continuing. And we help in that, but I thought that you should know that. So what do we do back there at our offices and on campus? We answer questions like this. We do. We answer questions like this. We coach students. We advise students. We counsel them. We help them figure out how to articulate their career goals. We help them to understand where their skills lie from what they've done. We help them extract that and communicate that on the resume. That's what a good career coach, advisor, counselor does. We do a lot of other things, but, but that's one of the things we do. We do not have the magic wand the magic wand of here's a job for you. We're educators primarily. We help make those connections. We're expert, we're extreme networkers. I would encourage you all to share your networks with your sons and daughters and encourage them to tap into yours and mine. But let me tell you about some of the things we do. Oh no, we have another goofed up slide. I don't get this. Okay, doesn't matter. There are three locations of career, for career services, and, and that's where students would come um, to meet with a counselor. There are really two that they would come to. One is at 46 College Avenue at, near, the, near the grease trucks, um, and the other is at the Bush Campus, uh, a part of the Bush Campus Center, and that is the office where I am the director. 
Our other office is an administrative office that does all sort of that backroom stuff of coordinating career days and arranging on-campus recruiting visits for employers and job listings and so forth. We serve all students and alumni in all majors, all years. There's the career development process is, is, is really truly a lifelong process. It began before your son or daughter ever came to Rutgers and will continue throughout their career. So I guess one of the things I like to say to everyone is career services is not for seniors only. And um, we help students at every point uh, within their college experience. And, uh, there's something for everyone. We're open year-round with evening hours. This often comes as a shock to students when they're on breaks. So we're there. Oh, that's a myth we have to dispel. In the summer, we're there. We're always there. Unless the university is closed, we're there. Uh, you could visit us if you could read that website, but you could just Google it. If you put Rutgers Career Services, it comes right up. Um, and we're on Facebook and Twitter, of course. Using social media to educate students and employers alike. And so what do we do specifically? There, we bro I'm, I've broken these slides into two areas, uh, career and information services and employment services, which is next. Uh, the career and information services would include, obviously, the career counseling, uh, which comes in the form of individual meetings with students. We have both the drop-in, I don't have time to schedule an appointment, what's an appointment, two weeks, what are you talking about, I need this today. So we have the drop-in version, which is on a first-come, first-served basis. Students can walk in and wait to be seen for a short period, or they could plan ahead, imagine that, <laughs> and schedule an appointment to meet with somebody maybe a week or two later, and sit down and talk about their game plan, their graduate school plans, their personal statement, their resume, the interview that's coming up, a salary they need to negotiate, what they're gonna do with the major, what they should minor in, should they go to law school, what test do they need to take for that, what's a second interview, what's a phone interview, how do I network, what's LinkedIn, how do I further that, all of those things, all of those things and more. That's what we do with students. We offer programs. I brought for you to see out there our spring calendar. It also gives you information about our services. It's, it's a pretty nifty piece and it gives you sort of an idea of the kind of programs we push out to students. But in addition to the 75 or so we offer each semester, our staff does another 150 programs like the one I'm doing today uh, based on special requests. So we're constantly meeting with student groups, st other outreach efforts and whatnot to help educate students about whatever the topic they're interested in. Today at 11.30, back on the Bush campus, two of my counselors are running a boot camp where they'll go through resume writing, interviewing, and job search, or I think it's networking. I think they start at 11. Today, on a Saturday, we run programs for anyone. Um, so this is something that might help you to understand a little bit about our programming side. We run panels on different career areas where we work with alums and employers to come in and teach students about the different careers uh, that they're in within a given major or industry. We uh, have an alumni career network where alums are serving as mentors to students. It's a way to help students connect with people who are working professionals and learn more about what it is they're doing by conducting an information interview or, or chatting with them via email and learning about um, them and maybe hopefully having them assist them in their job search. We have an online career library. Nobody reads books anymore. So we have all this available to students online. It's extensive, it's excellent, um, but they need to, of course, go in there and use that. In the employment world, career fairs lead the list. Uh, I was speaking with our manager of employer services yesterday and she and was telling her about the presentation today and she said, make sure you mention that we touch and interact with 1,000 unique employers. So it might be 200 that come to campus to interview. It might be 
50 that hold information sessions as part of that interview process or not, just separately. It may be several hundred others that don't recruit on campus, but they come to a career day, one of them. And beyond that thousand, there are thousands who list jobs with us. They list jobs, they list internships, they list some things part-time, but it's mostly things that are of the professional nature. So when we receive a job that is not that, we may send it off to our student, our cousins at student employment, and, uh, but we, and, and, and they also list jobs. They list some good jobs and they list some internships. So there are so many places where uh, students could find information. But, but we like to think that a lot of it comes through us at Career Services. And if a student is looking for jobs, they need to sign up and be in our system, which is branded and called Career Night, and uh, look at that information. Because it does require uh, a student to be proactive in the process. Um, we do a lot of communication with our students, so they, they do find things out from us, but, but they also need to meet us halfway and come in and be active in utilizing the services and resources that are available to them. Some final thoughts. Uh, know that skills and experience matters. And, and I know that doesn't necessarily read the way I wanted to. So do grades. <laughs> so do sado grades. So do grades. And when people say, well, what do you mean? I mean that sometimes the fork in the road is about the GPA. And what do you think it is? Let's see how smart you all are. What's the, what are they looking for, typically? 3.0 or better. So if it falls short of a 3.0, and it does oftentimes with good reason. I started in this, I went to that, I failed this, I'm now digging out of that hole, whatever. If it falls short, you better have that other stuff. You better have the experiences, you better have the good network, you better have developed leadership skills because you're competing with everybody else. And you're not just competing with Rutgers, you're competing with NYU, you're competing with Columbia, Princeton, other schools everywhere. Employers make strategic decisions about where they go and recruit. And luckily, we're high on the list of many, many organizations. They don't do it the way they used to do in the old days. Oh, the CEO went to you know, Villanova, so we're going to Villanova. They do that a little bit. But more and more, they're using a metrics-based strategic school sourcing to target. And they used to target 30 schools. Then they started targeting 20 schools. Guess what? Now they're only targeting eight schools. And, and, that, and that's, an, that's a trend I didn't maybe discuss too much, but that approach, that quantitative metrics-based approach uh, does impact who's coming and why they're coming. And they're coming here because of the excellent educational academic institution that Rutgers is. They're coming here because of the geography. They're coming here because of the diversity, the broad range of majors. They like that there's engineering. They like that there's computer science. They, Many of them just like, love our students. And they love the best ones, the brightest ones, too. So, can be concerned about your grades. Develop and cultivate your networks. Develop your job search skills. It's not always the best candidate that gets the job, it's the best communicator. It's a person who could speak to the employer's and address the employer's needs best sometimes, sometimes. It's a competitive process, so get your game on. And your game started when you came to college. It doesn't start if you're walking in in your senior year for help. It will help you, of course, we're here to help everybody. But that you didn't have your game on if you've waited that long, usually. But that's okay. Never too late, never too early. So I will leave you with Visit Career Services Early and Often, my favorite, and we're not for seniors only, my second favorite, and take any questions you may have. over. I think that that would have choices, but they could add in. And that was done nationally by a company called Universum that does a lot of employer surveying, so the feedback to employers and to universities 
uh, what students want. And, and that's powerful information because it helps everybody to understand things better. But again, you might find that what students are indicating are sort of what they know. You know, there's so much out there they don't know about in terms of opportunities. So it's companies with good branding and, and so forth. So it's, it's a little skewed in that way, but I think it's still interesting, which is why I shared it with you. <laughs> It's never too late, ever. I will say that the organizations that come to campus to recruit, people find this surprising. So this is another fun fact. For full time, they come in the fall for the graduating seniors. So they're able to project what their hiring needs will be. And they want to get there in the fall. Because otherwise they're going to lose out on the best if they wait too long. Now some come in the spring, some come both time periods, but the most competitive organizations come out in the fall to recruit. For internship recruiting, typically the big month of activity is February. That's the, the biggest month. That's the spike in our internship listings online. That's the month where the most employers are engaged in the recruiting process and interviewing. Like my son, got the job offer on March 16th. <laughs> I'll never forget that day. Other questions in the back? Uh, but, but employers will look at transcripts and they will consider and understand when a student's transferred or attended another university. They also are sensitive to and understanding that, that students may change their minds and they may have started off in a curriculum that didn't suit them and, and so performance was, wasn't there. But then once they got into their major, you know, it was this and then this. The problem is when it's this and then this, you know, at the end. That, that's never too great. Uh, but th they will look at the transcript. They will also do background checks, by the way, more and more. Uh, just this week I had um, a couple of instances where background checks were being conducted and they wanted full disclosure of everything, including t speeding tickets. So there will be background checks more and more. Our students, our children will be subject to background checks, uh, especially with the bigger Fortune 500 companies, without a doubt. Considering the uh, aging population of people more focused on lifestyle, watch out what is what is moving, the inclusion gradient, I do not see any good signs of nutrition related careers made up to the 40s. Yeah. I think that's because it's a niche. It is not, you don't see as many food science programs, but I think that is a growth area. I do. Just like digital marketing is, it's huge. Uh, this whole social media area is probably, I don't, I don't think it was on there clearly. It's, it's new, but yes, I would agree that that maybe not, didn't make the list. It could be because the number of, of uh, programs or jobs within that. You know, you could research that, you could look at that, but I would agree that that's, that's a hot area uh, given everybody's diet and concerns over nutrition and and aging, sure. The demographics feed into, it's like nursing and uh, elderly care. These are hot areas. Managing elderly care is, is something uh, that's on the rise. Two more questions. I'll be somewhere where right. you can come and st play stump the career counselor later. <laughs> We do. We do. We've done them in the past. We've done panels like that. And there's also an organization on campus that sprung up a year or two ago that's been phenomenally successful, running all sorts of stuff. So yes, that, that area has been addressed because that's been indicated by students. And that's also a trend of start your own. Make, 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 you know, make your own business and market as well, yes. Last question. Do we have access to the presentation? Yes, you have access to this presentation. In fact, you have access to everything I just said, I think. <laughs> Sorry, uh, parents, 
Parents.rutgers.edu. It's on our website. Uh, and like everyone said, we're on Twitter and Facebook. I don't know what all that stuff is, but if you do, it's there. <laughs> You also will have my email address at the, on the front slide. It's jbjones at echo.rockers.edu. And I also have business cards, too, which I'll leave out. Thank you. Things that I, that I said we're going to try and stay on schedule. Uh, Janet will be here from 12 to 1. Her room will be this room. Uh, so you'll have an opportunity to, to contact her, or talk to her, or whatever. One of the concerns we have with our program today, and one of the concerns we have for all of our parents' programs, is we want you to meet people. We want you to meet the people who work here. So when you go on a website, or you email somebody, or you talk to somebody, you're familiar with them, and I think that works really well. I have just, just a little bit of a summary, and then we're going to have the folks who are here representing the different uh, job opportunities and study abroad and things like that. They're going to introduce themselves, and then they're going to spend five to seven minutes kind of letting you know what they have. And then you, from 12 to 1, can determine whether there's three of them you want to go and visit and get some more information. First, after listening to Janet's presentation, and I know we've said this through orientations from day one, students, when they come here, number one, you need to have fun. You need to have a good time with what you're doing. So look for things that you like. It'll help you go through school and do the kinds of things that Janet said. It'll help you find opportunities. It'll help you look for career interests. It'll help you get started in what you're going to do early, not when you're ready to graduate. Second of all, work hard. There's nothing better than somebody who is enthusiastic, who works hard, who's on time, who does what they're supposed to do. Everybody likes that. And that really goes into the, the commitment to education. Your education, as you heard over and over again, it's more than just being in the classroom. It's networking. It's finding people who are in the areas you like, whether it's from the parents, whether it's from the alumni association, whether it's from your clubs and organizations, anything you do comes through the networking. That's how it helps you get career opportunities and jobs. It's not just about you going online, finding something, boom, you move, you make a nice connection. Grades are important, no question about it, but these other things all uh, put things together to make it uh, simple for you. And the last thing, and I know we harp on this over and over again, and you heard what uh, a career services talks to student, well, can I keep my nose ringing and things like that? There are consequences to every action that you have during the four or five years or whatever it is in school. There are consequences. Not all those consequences are bad. Some of the consequences are good. You meet somebody here today from the Learning Center and you wind up getting a job and you do something with teaching because you're really good in math and you tutor and the next thing you know you're uh, going into education you become a math teacher. Wow, you're thrilled. It's not like working. It's having fun. So there are consequences to your actions. So make sure you understand that because sometimes you can't turn it around and say, oh, I really didn't mean to do that. It's going to follow you, and it's really important for you to make good decisions. Committing to your educational experience is important. You need to do it from day one. And when I say commit, it means, hey, if you're here for four years, and I'd love to say, you know, hey, I come here just to take my classes and then I go, that's not good enough. You're not getting the best educational experience you can. You need to say, you know what, if I'm going to do that and I decide to come here to get that, I'm going to spend whatever I, time I can here, whether it's studying in the library, whether it's participating in a club or organization, you need to network and do everything you can. If you're going to ride here and ride home or go out, you're missing something. Take advantage of the things that are here. Um, next, like I said, what we'd like to do is we have about 10 different organizations that are going to talk about opportunities. 
uh, for either job experience or studying abroad or interning or whatever. And I think what we're going to do, because it's easier for everybody to do this, the folks who are here are going to introduce themselves. They can tell you best who they are and where they work and what they do. And we're going to kind of follow the list that's, that we sent out. And so I'm going to ask if uh, student employment can uh, come up first. You will need to keep the mic on and stay near this or carry this with you. Oh, I, we do too, but we're videoing it, so it needs to go on here. Talking so we get talking about adding to the nerves. Okay. Got it. Thank you. All right. So my name is Melanie Turnoff. I am the Job Location and Development Program Coordinator, the JLDP as I like to call it, as well as an Employment Counselor in the Student Employment Office. My name is Logan. I'm a student manager also in the student employment office. I'm a senior uh, poli-sci major at Montmartre. Yeah. I'm a, I graduated last year with my physics degree, and I'm currently in graduate school for education. So student employment, working with kids, um, students. I still look at them as kids because they're especially yours. They're right out of high school. I just student taught last fall. Um, I'm basically there to help with getting part-time jobs right now during the school year. Right now, I'm working on a job fair. Opportunities that are whether they're work study or non work study jobs, we have available. So we're not full time jobs like career services. We don't reach out nearly that far. I refer jobs to career services because we don't do that. But those part time jobs, we have a whole database available to students at Rutgers University to be able to contact employers, build those resume skills, get those applicable job skills that they can take to them to full-time jobs, to internships, to co-ops, so that they are prepared when they graduate. Or if you just need money, like most college students do, mm -hmm. it's nice to have that part-time job on the side that fits around. And these employers are ones that know they're looking at students. So knowing that you have students, they're working around your job schedule. They're working around your class schedule. They are flexible. They understand. So it's a good way to make pocket money. It's a good way to build skills. and. It's keeping me busy and yeah. thoroughly really enjoy it. <laughs> but I mean, we'll be in, I think, 114. Yeah, room 114. 114 for more questions, more information. So, talk to you. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Carla. I work for um, Rutgers Study Abroad. Um, I, my position on campus is just recruiting and outreach and to let students know um, all the programs we have available. We have close to now 100 programs in about 35 different countries. Um, students can go abroad as soon as the summer after their freshman year. We have summer, semester, and year-long programs. Um, students when they're abroad are earning Rutgers credits. So um, all the credits that they earn on their programs can come right back to them, uh, right onto their transcript. Um, the opportunities we have available are anywhere from just you know semester long programs or um, service learning opportunities, uh, internship, and um, just you know a wide range of uh, different programs uh, for any major at Rutgers pretty much. Um, you know, the benefits of studying abroad, they, you know, you can learn a new language, um, get, um, you know, just by leaving your comfort zone, you can increase your personal confidence and your independence, um, your global awareness, um, just more than you can have at Rutgers, but it's still earning your Rutgers degree while overseas, so it's, you know, kind of an experience that you like any other, not like any other. Um, uh, for parents, if you want to go to our website to see all of our different programs, we're constantly adding more, so just visit studyabroad.ruckers.edu, and I'll be in room 115 later um, if you guys want to ask me more questions about it. Good morning, everyone. My name is Officer Richard McGilvery, and I'm with the Rutgers University Police Department. 
I'm also a 2001 graduate of Rutgers University, Rutgers College, which I'm very proud of. The one thing I do regret looking back on my college career is not doing more with career services and kind of exploring what I did. Not to say that I don't like my job now, it's just it would have been easier to get had I done those things <laughs> or earlier on. Uh, I also was not a traditional, uh, I didn't take the traditional path to get this job. I was actually a, a history major with an anthropology minor with the intention of going into uh, secondary education. But along the way, I decided that I wanted to uh, pursue different paths. And uh, one of the things I tell the interns, which we'll go over in a minute, is that uh, sometimes to get a, a law enforcement job, you don't have to do criminal justice. Now, that's not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying that if you do criminal justice, I also recommend that the students take the couple of extra classes they need to turn that minor into a double major. Now, why do I say that? Because when you're doing criminal justice, and you're only doing criminal justice, it kind of narrows down what you're exposed to in terms of other jobs. However, if you take a couple more classes, you can turn your, your minor into a double major and therefore you're opened up to a lot more uh, presentable career opportunities with that double major. So that's, that's definitely one thing I tell my interns when we, uh, when we have our meetings. What I'm going to go over today are just three, three topics real quick. First one is going to be a job you can get while you're a student here that kind of gives you the sense of what it's like to work within a public safety setting, meaning uh, police, work. Also we do uh, an internship, which you can get while you're a student here, and then I'll tell you quickly about how to potentially pursue a police job as a career later on. So uh, you can go down to the down three, kind of out of order. Uh, there you go. One more? There you go. Community service officer. That's, a, that's what's called a CSO. Basically it's a, a student who applies for, they're interviewed, they're hired, trained, and then uniformed to go out onto campus and be an extra set of eyes and ears for the public safety department. It's a great way to get exposure into the public safety world of having to be somewhat regimented and having some responsibilities put on you, and you get paid for it, which is a, which is a really good pay rate for, uh, for, a college, for a college job. It's about $10 an hour. The hours are flexible so they can adjust it to their class time accordingly and it's a really good way to get that exposure into a public safety type job. There are some uh, training requirements that go along 40 hours so you get to learn that that looks really good on a resume and it is somewhat of a prestigious position on campus because they only take what we consider the best and the brightest and the ones that are most capable of handling that job. It's a really good way to get exposure into criminal justice and, the, and public safety to see if that's really what you want to do. And you can do it fairly early on. We generally tend to not hire too many freshmen because it, it, the job does require a, a lot of experience with the campus and where classes are, where buildings are, and as a freshman you may not know that right away. But we definitely encourage freshmen to come in and apply to get used to the interviewing process and what's required of them so that when they when their sophomore year comes around, maybe they'll be more ready for that position. But it's, it's definitely a good one to take. You just one up. Oh, you got to go. Yeah, it is. there you go. Uh, what we also have is a student internship program, the Rutgers University Police Department Student Internship Program. And that, that program is going to be a little bit more difficult to get because we only have four positions open, a maximum of four positions open every semester. So that hiring or that um, interview process is going to be a little bit more strenuous. Basically, it's a full semester, roughly 12 week, eight hour a week, 10 hour, uh, two hour internship class per week. So we're looking at 120 hours worth of internship time with our public safety department and specifically our police department. Now the difference with this internship with a lot of other ones is that in the past when you go to an internship course, you only get maybe the first day. You, you get there, you introduce, you're introduced to people, you get to see all the cool toys that they have, and then they throw you into a filing cabinet and they say, hey, you do that for the next 11 weeks. And it's kind of like, oh no, oh, that, this isn't really what I thought it was going to be. But our internship program actually allows the student to ride, ride along with the police officer, which is really a, a great experience for them. So you're taking it to the next level. Now you're actually seeing what that police officer does. They don't get out of the car, they don't get involved in anything, but at least they get to see what it's like. And they get to interview and ask and kind of develop a relationship with one of our officers. So it's really, it's really a good uh, technique to getting to know what the job is like. And it's also eligible for credits and a, I don't want to say an easy grade, but uh, a good grade, let's just call it that. One up. 
and then you get to the actual police department. And it's kind of hard to explain what we do here. We're, we're a bit of a hybrid between a state police, a state trooper, and a municipal police officer in that we have, we're hired by the state, we have statewide jurisdiction, but we stay local to the campus that we're assigned to unless we decide to switch, if it's Newark, New Brunswick, or Camden. So it's a little bit different. We have a uniform patrol, we have community policing, which I'm involved with, we have a detective bureau, ATV, so a lot of the other things that everybody else has. But we also work the major events. We also work the football games, the basketball games, any concerts. We have all kinds of famous people, everything from the Dalai Lama to Snooky. So we run both all ends of the spectrum here. So, uh, so that's, that's, I'm going to leave it at that just to, to keep within the time frame. But uh, one thing I will close on is that as a police department, we realize that we have a responsibility to keep the students safe. But we also realize that we are a potential resource for their future. So we try to get in communication with the students and let them know that we are here to answer any questions that they have about law enforcement or about public safety if they want to get into the job. And we do like to offer our services to them if they're willing to take it. Thank you. Yes, yes, that's another thing is that uh, Rutgers University is, is proud to have one of the few mounted patrol divisions that's actually uh, conducted by students. So basically any, any student that you have the interest in horses or has ridden horses in the past, they can apply to the uh, CSO program. And within that CSO program, they have the mounted patrol division of that. It's a, that that's extremely prestigious. I mean, there's only a handful of people, a handful of students that actually get that position. So you really have to be good with horses. But if you get that, it's, it's one of the few in the country that actually has it. So it's, it's really good to look for. Good morning. My name is Yelmi Lendov. I'm an assistant director for the Office of Residence Life here at Rutgers. Um, our department is pretty big, and we have three different kinds of uh, employment opportunities for students. Um, I guess the first thing I like to do is in your sheet, there has a list for contacts. So I'd like to give you a phone number in case you'd like to have that number and you're not able to attend the session. So the phone number is 732-932-4300. So I'll go over that again, 732-932-4371. And that number works for any of the positions that we are going to be discussing. I also have an email and a website and all that stuff. Um, and I'll be in one of the private rooms later on today. Um, in terms of the opportunities that Residence Life offers for students, what I like to say is that for these opportunities, they provide a lot of the experiences and skills that you heard about from career services before. So they're the opportunities that we believe provide a lot of those um, leadership opportunities, the hands-on experience, the networking. So they do learn a lot while they're doing the job. For most of these positions, students do need to live on campus. So I'm going to start with the first kinds of employment opportunities, those being resident assistant and apartment assistant. Um, for those positions, you do need to live on campus. You apply during your first year, um, so you cannot do the job as a first year student, but you apply usually at the end of the fall semester, beginning of the spring semester. And then you get the job starting second year, and you could have the job from there on as long as you meet the job expectation. The compensation for the position range from housing, um, so it covers the cost of housing to a meal plan although not all of the positions provide the meal plan, but they do provide housing and a meal plan. Again, amazing leadership opportunity in terms of involvement on campus, the training that they get, the experiences that they get, is a position that is highly looked upon in terms of when they do apply to become um, graduate hall director. So it does serve as a stepping stone also in terms of opportunities in graduate school. But while at Rutgers, again, it provides great opportunities for leadership and involvement. Um, so again, those who are resident assistant and apartment assistants, they need to live on campus. The timing is key because the selection again begins at the end of the fall semester every year and goes into spring semester and then you could do it for the rest of your career here. The second opportunity is called community assistant program. Um, they try, this, these positions are a little more difficult, um, but the students don't seem to mind. And what's difficult is that these positions, the hours are generally like 11 o'clock at night to 3 in the morning. 
the good thing about that is a lot of the students are up late, so they find this to be nicely convenient. Students can request to have one of these positions in the building that they live. So it's mainly sitting at a desk in the building that you live, and you sit at that desk usually from either 10 or 11 o'clock at night to 3 in the morning. The pay is pretty good. Um, I believe it's like $9 to start an hour. So again, the students do enjoy the convenience of living in the building. You just go downstairs, you're done, you go back upstairs, the hours are a little, again, what we may think as parents to be a little difficult, but our students tend to be up. So those are usually another opportunity for students as per hour and based on the number of hours that the students work. And then the last opportunity is more in terms of the college work study program. So if students qualify for college work study, they could um, do the college work study hours in any of our offices, and that's in any campus. So we have offices on Cook, Douglas, um, College Avenue, Livingston, Bush. So we have a number of opportunities and we do hire a significant number of college work study students to work within our offices. And, and for those positions, you don't need to be a on-campus student. So that's on-campus and commuter. So again, the phone number is 732-932-4371. If you want to go on the website, is are you on campus that Rutgers at edu, um, and that's pretty much it. I'll be talking to you if you want to stop by later on in terms of one of the rooms in the afternoon. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Michael Westrall. I'm a uh, I'm an EMT here at Rutgers. I'm actually I wasn't a Rutgers student. I went to Princeton, got my undergrad there, and I'm currently a fourth year med student at Robert Wood Johnson Medical School here in New Brunswick. Um, my partner here. Uh, my name is Dorian Menand. I'm a sophomore here at Rutgers University. I'm employed as a ESO, as an emergency services officer. I'm a firefighter and an EMT, approximately three years in the fire service, volunteer in East Brunswick, and approximately one year as an EMT. And this summer will be nine years as a firefighter for me and six as an EMT. Uh, and I've been with Rutgers for three years now. Uh, we do different jobs, but we're still under the umbrella of the public safety department. Um, we're in the emergency services division of public safety. And what that is, is um, first of all, we have lieutenants on campus. Uh, just as a brief introduction to emergency services at Rutgers, we have lieutenants on campus 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. They are firefighter EMTs who respond to all fire alarms, any sort of medical emergency on campus. Um, and they also do a lot of non-emergency service calls as well, such as vehicle lockouts. Um, they're basically our bosses during the day. Um, there's also a division of fire safety and they're responsible for a lot of the fire safety codes in the, in the buildings on campus. There are many, many buildings as you can imagine, both uh, uh, residential and academic and laboratory. And The emergency service officers actually work underneath that, the fire safety bureau and they do the inspections of the sprinklers, the uh, exit signs, the fire extinguishers, smoke detectors, uh, working alongside the fire inspectors. The EMS on campus is also 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And we provide emergency medical coverage for the campus as well as surrounding communities, uh, as well as the multiple events that uh, the police officers spoke about, such as the football games, concerts. Um, and then finally, there's also a training division in emergency services. The public safety building over in New Brunswick, well, a couple of blocks over, uh, has a class, several classrooms actually, and they have classes throughout the year, both CPR, um, various public safety related classes, and uh, students often teach some of those classes. Um, before I go any further, a lot of you may be thinking that you're, you're not a firefighter EMT right now, doesn't really apply to you. Uh, I didn't get my EMT certification until my junior year of college. So there's still plenty of time if this is something that might be an interest to you. 
Uh, there are summer classes where you can take the EMT class over the summer. Um, you can do it over the course of a semester. We just started this semester an EMT class here at Rutgers that there are students taking for credit and for certification. Uh, so they're going to come out of this class with a substantial number of credits and an EMT license to be able to work. Uh, and the experience that I'm going to get to in a little bit. So besides, for the, the requirements of the ESO, uh, you need to be a, fire, a certified firefighter and you have to have a valid driver's license. For the EMTs, you need to be certified EMT basic with one year of experience uh, as an emergency. There, there are two types of EMTs. Some do like interfacility transports and then others do 911 calls. And we're looking for EMTs who are answering 911 calls because it's a little bit different experience and that's what we, we need on the campus. Uh, and you also have to have a valid driver's license and there is a brief skills and fitness test to, that you need to pass to be employed. And again, for the training division, uh, a lot of you I know may, be, may have been uh, like lifeguards or CPR instructors in high school and there's opportunity to continue doing that and there's also opportunity to take classes to become a CPR instructor or anything like that and teach classes while you're here and make some money. So some of the benefits of employment here. Um, it's, it's a pretty good pay rate. I think the student for e student EMTs, it's around $12 an hour. Uh, it's a little bit more than a lot of the other uh, jobs because they recognize that you put a good time investment into taking the class and getting certified. And that's just not the same uh, at other positions. You get a great experience where answering calls into New Brunswick, Piscataway, uh, Edison, uh, you know, pretty big towns. Uh, it looks great on your resume when you, you go to apply for jobs. No matter what field it's in, it's going to be something to talk about, and that's what interviews are all about. Uh, you you got to make a connection. You got to have a good conversation. Uh, they're going to get tired of talking to you if you don't if you you have a very bland resume. So it, it looks very great. Uh, and if you like to teach, maybe you're going into education, as some of our employees actually are. Uh, there's the opportunity to teach in training classes. You're going to teach your colleagues on the job. If you have a little, if you know something that they don't know, it, it, there's plenty of opportunity to teach. And the camaraderie that we, we form with everybody is just, you know, we're a great big family. It's really just wonderful. Uh, and as I mentioned, you, you get to be involved in events on campus. Uh, I think one of the coolest parts of my job that I remember was being on the field at a Rutgers football game and the national anthem was sung and a C-130 flew right overhead. Uh, that was just blew me away. Um, as far as the getting like a foothold into careers, there are. And it's, it's not just going into firefighting or being a career EMT or paramedic, which obviously we have many uh, who do that, including the New Brunswick Fire Department, North Plainfield, uh, all of our full full-time EMTs at Rutgers. We do have three salaried full-time EMTs. Uh, they were all previously. EMTs at Rutgers as students or ESOs, in fact. Uh, some have gone on to the uh, Washington, D.C. Metro Fire Department. Uh, we've got paramedics at the Somerset Hospital System, uh, Robert Wood. Um, many have gone into the military, uh, police departments, including Rutgers here, uh, New Brunswick, Department of Homeland Security, Florham Park. Uh, many people have gone into nursing, and we have several employees that Robert Wood, uh, JFK Edison, Hackensack, and St. Peter's who started at Rutgers uh, in the ESO or EM EMT programs. Um, medical school, like myself, uh, we also have others right now who are at New Jersey Med School. Uh, there's one down in Stratford at School of Osteopathic Medicine, one down in Florida at Nova Southeastern. Uh, some have gone on to get law degrees, business degrees, like I said, education. We got one uh, going through the grad school education right now. She's going to be a teacher. Um, so it's, the, the skills that you learn, the discipline, the teamwork skills are really applicable to all sorts of careers uh, and be a great asset to your resume and your experience. So if you have any questions about the programs, uh, we'll be in room 121 after this. Thank you.
Okay, can everybody hear me? I'm gonna kind of walk around a little bit. Good morning. My name is Danielle Miro. I'm the Assistant Director of Business Affairs for Rutgers Dining Services. Uh, I just wanna give you a little bit of a brief overview about dining. I'm sure many of you in the room like to eat. So we are here to serve the palates of your students while they're here on campus. Um, dining is comprised of about 65 or 70 plus managers. We have about 450 professional staff. We employ about 500 students, and we have a workforce of what we call casual labor. So these would be folks that might work for us in concessions and in our catering department. Uh, we operate services on both the New Brunswick, Piscataway, and Camden campus. And we have about 17,000 students on board plans this year. So we obviously have a lot of people that we have to please on a daily basis. Um, in addition to running the, the dining facilities, we also run several retail outlets in the Cook Campus Center, the Douglas Campus Center, and in the, um, the Livingston Student Center. Uh, we also operate the Alumni Faculty Club. For those that are members, anyone can be a member. Um, and we also are the university's concessionaire. So we take care of all the, um, the concessions at the stadium and at the rack. And we are the university's caterer. So that just gives you a little bit of an overview of who we are and how we operate. So we can go to the first slide. So go Rutgers. This little guy, one day he's gonna come here. Okay, um, just to give you a little bit uh, of additional background, we're the third largest collegiate dining operation in the nation, okay? We're self-operated, which means we're not an Aramark, we're not a Sodexo, we're Rutgers Dining Services, so we're all employees of Rutgers University. We operate five student dining facilities, four here in New Brunswick and one in Camden, and uh, we serve four and a half million meals annually a lot of food to serve, okay? 5,000 catered events annually. Are you express debit program? This is in addition to students who have a meal plan. If they choose, they can put discretionary funds in their account and use those monies anywhere on campus and at off-campus locations that participate with our program. We have about 65 plus merchants in the Arizona community that actually accept Are You Express. So why work for dining? We employ over 500 students each semester. So naturally, we see some turnover. We have convenient on-campus locations, valuable work experience for your resume, flexible schedules, and you can meet a lot of great people. As you can see, these guys enjoying their lobsters on King Neptune night. For many of you parents who might come visit us in September. Several locations on campus. Any one of the dining halls, they're always looking and seeking staff. Any one of our campus center locations, the Rutgers Club employs uh, wait staff. So we have predominantly most of our staff at the club is students. Um, when all the VIP members of the university community go there, they like to be waited on by student staff. The Healthy Dining Team, this is a uh, program that is run jointly between the Department of Nutritional Sciences and our uh, departmental nutritionists. This is like a health education program. She's got a whole team of students who are predominantly nutrition and dietetic majors, and they work with her and they do nutritional education in many of the dining units. Uh, our catering department, we also employ wait staff and catering. All the catering events that occur across the campus, we do on a daily basis. So we, we like a lot of students to work with us for this because we have events in the morning, we have evening events, so the hours are very flexible. Um, concessions, again, we do employ a lot of students to work with us in our concessions program. These are some of the different job functions that we might ask a student to do. They could be working in a preparation area in the kitchen, they could serve, clean, maintenance, which maintenance does mean, yes, sometimes you might be asked to work in the dish room, um, you know, with, alongside our regular employees, cashiering, a dining room attendant, somebody who might be responsible for the cleaning and wiping of tables and just keeping the dining room straight. You can imagine a self-service facility, students are in and out of our doors, you know, throughout the various hours of the day. We're open at 7 a.m., we close at 9 p.m., so that's thousands of students coming in continuously throughout the day. We never close our doors. Um, at the courtesy station, which is our welcome stations, where students may swipe in when they enter the facility and then it's all you care to eat. Uh, nutrition education, like I said before, waiter, waitress, and chef's assistants. 
So the work schedule, we're obviously open seven days a week because the students are here on campus. So we gotta be open seven days. So we're looking for students to work at least a minimum of eight to 12 hours expected a week. We do have students that work 20 hours. We do have students that work 25 or 30, but we don't like to work them more than that because the obvious reason that they're here is their academics. Uh, we try to accommodate class schedules and other commitments. We do understand students are busy, they're involved, but we do like for them to come to work when it is their scheduled shift that they'd select to work. Hey, I see one of my students here. So, okay, pay and benefits. Starting pay, $7.50 an hour. There is an annual increase in September or January. It's tiered range and step pay scale to encourage continued employment. So each year, students do get an increase. So there is some incentive and there are opportunities. We do have a bonus program at the end of the semester. Attendance and performance requirements must be met. So why do we do this incentive? We want the students to come work. They get an hour, a dollar an hour for each one of the hours that they work during the semester. We do this so we can encourage them to stay through the busy exam period. Because students will typically call and say, I have an exam, I can't come to work. So this is an incentive. So at the end of the semester, they worked all their hours and they met the criteria, they can get an extra $200. Isn't that a great bonus? I mean, wouldn't you like that extra money in your pocket? So this, and a lot of students actually do very well by this. So this is a great program. Um, discounted meals provided, currently $1.50 per shift. We do charge the students that do not have a meal plan $1.50. Um, students that do have a meal plan and work for us, they can swipe their card for their meal. Um, promotional opportunities. We do have students who show some incentive and initiative that they really work, like working for dining and they will be applied to be a meal manager. So they'd be responsible for managing their specific shift. If in fact they're so interested and they want to be the student unit manager, they can be an actual manager, say a Brower Commons or a manager of one of our facilities like a Bush Dining Hall. They work under the supervision of an actual supervisor. So they have responsibilities that are of management capacity and there is a certain, a higher pay rate. So it is a nice incentive for them. We do have students who have actually gone through this program and they've actually been offered a professional position within the department. So we have probably four or five success stories of this. Some of these folks have been here for 20 years. So this is something that I encourage students if they actually like working in the dining field or nutrition field it's something to consider. How to apply. Apply in person at any dining location. You can go to any dining hall, ask to speak with the manager, and look at your employment application, put you in touch with a student unit manager. You can talk about the opportunities that are available. Um, and if you'd like, I brought applications today for students who want to apply. Okay. Rutgers Dining Services, we're located at food.ruckers.edu. Please visit us so you can learn more about us. And check us out on Facebook and Twitter. We are on Facebook and Twitter. Social media is the thing these days. And I want to also take this opportunity to talk to you about our win a free meal plan contest, which is big. You want to go to the next slide? So I know this is kind of difficult to read, but I brought literature about this, <coughs> which I'll have with me in room 122, where I'm at, if you please come visit me. Um, but we are trying to encourage students to become a fan of Rutgers University Dining Services on Facebook but the contest is on Twitter. So to do that, you can go there, you can see all the entry rules and how you get in, and you just have to retweet at Rutgers Dining, and then we're, we're gonna randomly select one of the students, and they can have a meal plan of their choice. So we're really excited about this, so we're looking for a lot of fans. Who's a fan? Any students? Okay, we got two fans. You're a fan? All right, all right. So thank you for this opportunity. Good luck. Come visit me at uh, 122. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. No. Not picking up. I'm trying to it this way.
You okay? All right. <laughs> okay. I'll try to do, put on my uh, teacher voice. Is that any better? That's better, great. Hi, my name is uh, Tina Sohn and I'm here representing the RLCs or the Rutgers Learning Centers. Uh, we are the group on campus and provide all the academic support for both um, primarily undergraduate students but we also do service graduate students. And in order for us to do um, the good work that I think that we do and students tell us that we do, um, we need your students to come and work for us. Uh, we are a very, very small department as far as professional staff go. Uh, we have four learning centers at the university, one on each campus, and it is primarily, um, all of those centers, the work is primarily done by students under the guidance of um, the director. Um, I direct the learning center on the Livingston campus and the um, office manager slash principal secretary. Um, all of the other good work we do, as I say, is done by students. Um, as Janet said too, um, what we're in the business of doing is not only providing them with a salary, but trying to provide them with some of the skill sets that they're going to need for life after Rutgers. Um, Janet mentioned a couple of different things, being able to work with people um, in groups, large groups, small groups, um, working across teams, um, being able to manage your time. Um, being able to um, communicate what you know, what you do to another student. All of those are skill sets that students are going to need when they leave Rutgers. We um, have students who are part of the federal work study program. The majority of our students are what we call um, casual hourly employees. And some of the things that they might do in a learning center is um, be our frontline people, uh, be the people at our front desk who greet the students, um, who help them swipe in and talk to uh, them about the different services um, that we offer. Um, some of our students might be the students who actually provide the services. Um, they might be um, a peer academic tutor. Um, a peer academic tutor um, primarily works with students in small groups trying to help students who are struggling in a particular course to um, figure out why they're struggling. Um, maybe it's something they missed in a big lecture. Um, maybe they've been ill. For any number of reasons, students will come into a peer tutor and say, I'm just not getting it. Can you help me? Um, we ask that our um, peer tutors have a cumulative GPA of at least a 3.0 and we ask that they have gotten at least an A or a B plus in the course that they would like to tutor for us. We tutor everything from elementary algebra to um, fourth year calculus. We do all the sciences, we do biology, we do chemistry, we do the big awful course here, organic chemistry. Um, we do physics. Uh, we do things like economics. We do things like accounting and statistics and uh, languages. We do things from Arabic to Hebrew to French to Spanish to Italian. So there's a lot of opportunity for students who would like to be um, peer tutors. Um, they get the experience of working with students in small groups. Um, they really have to be good time managers. And they also do other things for us. They might go out and maybe do something like I'm doing this morning. Um, the other um, thing that we ask students to help us with are to act as study group leaders. And that program is growing in leaps and bounds. Right now we have study group leaders working with faculty in um, biology, in organic chemistry, and in physics. And hopefully that program is um, going to grow. Um, all of the students that provide these services for us are um, 
required to attend mandatory training um, where we talk to them about things like um, cognition, um, how people learn, um, how to uh, pay attention to various learning styles. So even while they're not getting credit for the information they're getting, they're getting a lot of information that they then turn around and use in their own classes to become better students. Uh, we will be starting a program um, in the fall that is still very, very much in its infancy, something called a learning assistant program. Um, that again will be students working with students in um, the science fields and the tech fields, the, some of the engineering fields, again working with faculty and then working with students in small groups to again help them learn how to learn the material in their classes. This will be a paid um, position by the semester. Uh, these students will also be taking a three credit pedagogy class and again the same types of skill sets working in teams, working across teams, um, supervising students in groups, um, working on your time management skills. Um, as I say, most of our students are not federal work study. We start them at $10 an hour. There are opportunities for raises um, depending on um, their evaluations at the end of each semester. We certainly welcome um, federal work study um, candidates um, to work at our front desk, to work as um, tutors, to work as um, study group leaders. Um, I will be around. I'm not sure what room I'm in, um, but if anyone, if you'd like to come in and talk to me a little bit more about our opportunities, um, I would love to do that because I can't do my job without your students. I really can't. Thanks a lot. She'll be in room 123. Thank you, Kim. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kim Stanick. I work for the Rutgers Parents Association. I worked freshman and sophomore year as a federal work study student and then I lost um, my federal work study money and they actually hired me. So that's a great way to start out and get in the door. Um, I'm a senior and I'm a math major and I'm currently in the Graduate School of Education to be a middle school math teacher. And before I knew I wanted to go into education, I took, um, I'm also part of Douglas Residential College. So I took an externship, which is, mine was one week, but it could be one to two weeks uh, over winter break or spring break. Spring break only one week. Um, I took it with uh, Philip Morris, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to go into education or business. So I took that, and I noticed a lot of my education and my teaching sort of came out um, when I was trying to do sales and things like that. So I knew um, that I wanted to do education. So um, at the registration desk, I will be there. Uh, you saw me when you came in. But there is an extern sponsor uh, sheet with all this past year's sponsors listed. And there's also a little pamphlet that describes the program. And uh, as a woman, it's never too late to join Douglas Residential College. Thank you. We are pretty close to schedule, which is kind of, kind of nice. Uh, the last thing that we want to talk about is volunteerism uh, and community service and giving back. Uh, we don't have a specific program here for it, but there are lots of opportunities. Just like everyone's expected once you get out into society to, to give back and to help and to assist, there are plenty of opportunities for the students at the university to participate. Everything from some of the larger things like the dance marathon, which is an incredibly large community service project that the university students work on, to working with some organizations, uh, American Cancer Society and Real Aid for Life, uh, juvenile diabetes, there are walks on campus where you can lend your time to help out. A lot of these things come from other students and family members that might be involved in something but there are lots of opportunities. 
these are things that you want to work into your schedule. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you're contributing without worrying about getting paid for it or doing something, and I think it's a, a, a great opportunity. Uh, as, as I said before, a lot of our uh, brochures that Janet Jones talked about in the career services, we have out at the desk so you can pick those up if you want to see them. Uh, but we also have a new uh, program that's been brought back to the university. It's the Student Legal Services Center. And I, I know you don't really need legal services per se, but sometimes students do. And this is providing legal service to students of the university who want to get that. It's free legal services. It's not service where you're going out and paying an attorney, but a lot of our students will live off campus. They don't live on campus. And one of the biggest concerns are leases and concerns for uh, their landlords. So we have a, a, a legal center. It's staffed by um, uh, two attorneys. The director is Donald Heilman, uh, who's been working here for a long time. Uh, he working in student life. Uh, he's getting his doctorate in education. He's been a trial lawyer in the Middlesex County area for over 20 years. He has lots of contacts, and all of the legal services that are provided for by them uh, are, again, from attorneys in the local area who work with students to deal with concerns. I, again, I'm not saying this because we think lots of our students need legal help, but it's certainly nice to know that there's something on campus you can go to uh, to ask questions to make sure you're putting yourself in the right spot. And I know a lot of it pertains to uh, the, the, the um, landlord and the leasing arrangements in the, in the local area. These brochures are outside. And again, like everything else, uh, there are uh, websites uh, for students to get involved in this. They're located on 14 Lafayette Street uh, on the College Avenue campus and these are out there for you. So, yes, Rebecca? Yes, okay. Uh, Rebecca Brenowitz. Uh, also, I'd like to, before, as Rebecca's coming up here, uh, there are some of our, some of your uh, Parents Association Executive Board members sitting here. So if you have questions about the association all, Luella is sitting down here, Ron over here, Rebecca, Marcy, sitting in the middle, uh, Karen is sitting over here. So if, if you have questions about the organi your organization, and your organization is about nine to 10,000 families strong, so we have lots of involvement, and there's an opportunity. So the other thing, again, before Rebecca goes, because I'm not gonna get on again, there's an evaluation form, very simplistic evaluation form, but please let us know what you thought about your program, let us know what you'd like to see changed, and make sure you go on to the website and let us know what your concerns are if you haven't done that already. Again, Rebecca. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, as Lee introduced me, uh, my name's Rebecca Brenowitz. I work at the Zimmerly Art Museum. It's over on the College Avenue campus. It's part of Rutgers. It's been there 40 years. We're one of the largest in the country. And when I say that, we have um, over 60,000 pieces in our collection. The reason I wanted, I felt compelled to talk to you is because we have opportunities for students, hired help, which is uh, hourly, you, you can become a guard. It's not with a gun or a billy stick, but it is watching and protecting our artwork. You can take out an internship at the Zimmerly. We have many opportunities working in various different departments. You do not have to be an expert in art or even being in the presence of art, you acquire an understanding and appreciation. It's a wonderful place to work. We have tours that come in and we need help with little kids to seniors to all sorts of visitors. Um, it's free to the students. Uh, admission is free to the parents. You can even, my plug is, even this weekend you can go between 12 and 5 on Saturday and Sunday and enjoy the entire museum. We have many events and in the events we have a whole volunteer program. So I can use students um, such as yourselves and even parents. We have a wonderful retail store. 
and it is attached to a cafe that also you can use your RU Express card, as Danielle mentioned. Um, it's a great place to volunteer, take out an internship, get a job, even take um, work study. We also have many. So just keep that on your list. I don't have any information with me today, but if you see me, I'll give you my card. Uh, we're looking now for summer help, and we're looking for fall help. Our guards do also get paid $10 an hour, and there's significant training, and we write great recommendation letters. Um, so definitely come see me or contact me through the Parents Association or through the Zimmerly Art Museum. And again, if you're free this weekend, please, just show your Rutgers Parent Association card. That card is really great for getting into places, getting discounts, um, so use it. It's not, it should not be kept in the folder. Take it out, put it in your wallets and your bags, and uh, we look forward to you stopping in in all the various different uh, rooms that we have next. So again, thank you for attending today, and uh, we look forward to seeing you outside. I think that the uh, EMT program is in room 112. It says 122, but we think it's 112 because there is no room 122 at this moment. So uh, they're going to go to room 112. Okay. Uh, thank you all again. The, the programs will uh, run. Uh, we, we're not going to have it every 20 minutes. It's just go to the ones that you want. So remember, free of service is back here. And uh, thank you for coming and participating, and let us know what you need. <laughs> Okay, super. I did it.